Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So I've been wanting to fool with a Flying V since forever, and I finally got my hands on one. And this one is an Antique Natural, it's a 2022, and it's obviously just a husk, so I've got to put the thing together. I don't have the pickups yet, but I've got a few parts to get me started. Here is the pick guard. This actually came with the guitar, so I got lucky on that. I'm gonna throw a set of Flusen Deluxe tuners at this thing. I've got a Gibson bridge and a Gibson tailpiece to throw at it along with the studs and i've got some pots that i've got sitting over here not sure which one of these that i'll choose yet but i've got a set of cts pots and a couple gibson pots i've got a mix and match because i don't have three of either in terms of pickups i've got a set of seymour duncans that are on order i'm probably going to install those i've got a set of vintage forge rings that are on order definitely going to use those and i've got a nice switchcraft right angle switch that's coming don't have that yet i've obviously got switchcraft jacks on hand i use those all the time but i've got one that came out of a gibson i'll probably just go ahead and use it like it is need to clean up the fretboard a little bit other than that it's just a bunch of assembly so I'm going to start by installing the tuners. The tuners that come on this V are Grover style tuners. The tuners that I'm going to install are Gibson Deluxe style tuners or actually Klusen Deluxe because they came from a 2013 model guitar. They're two screw style tuners and luckily someone's already modified this guitar to have two screws. So all I have to do is install. Now this is no surprise, but the holes that are here are not quite lining up with the holes in the tuners. And that's because obviously, first of all, they were a grower style tuner to begin with. And then second of all, somebody else drilled the hole that was on top. The quickest and easiest repair is to drill these out to the size of a toothpick and then dowel the holes with the toothpick, then redrill. Just to make sure I'm in the ballpark on my drill bit size, I go ahead and measure the toothpick, which in this case measures out to 0 0.085 inches. Looks like the number drill bit that's gonna approximate that size the best is a 44. And before I get started, I'm gonna make a quick tape line on my drill bit. It's gonna give me a place to stop. And then I can just enlarge these holes just a bit. I just need to put some wood glue on the dowels and then hammer them in and then I'll cut the excess off with a razor blade. All right, those need to dry. I've got to do the other five. Once I get these to dry, I'll cut them off flush with the razor blade with a little bit of tape wrapped around each side just to make sure that I don't scratch the finish as I cut them off. Then I'll move on to redrilling. After the doweling, I just screwed these things on, tightened them up with the nuts on the front and then drilled the holes in the back and they fit great now. While I was waiting on the glue to dry earlier, I went ahead and mounted the pots and I'm gonna go ahead and start soldering some things in here even though I don't have the pickups yet. Uh, I do have the switch now. I'm just gonna ground this braided shielded wire on this existing jack that I already had and I'll just ground it to one of these pots run it to the the common wire on the switch then i can go ahead and probably work on the tone control and i'll see where else i can go i can probably get the ground wire in between the three pots too well i've been at the wiring a little while and i actually feel like i'm working on a fender with this pick guard stuff but at any rate i've got the three pots the diagram that i found online showed that these two were supposed to be volumes and this one was the tone it's a little bit weird because i'm used to this being a volume and this being a volume on the les paul wiring diagram but it's a v so the volume volume and tone are in place that's a 0 0.022 capacitor on the tone pot. I've got a couple 500K CTS pots and one 500K Gibson pot. And I've got the Switchcraft jack wired in place and the Switchcraft switch wired in place. So when I get the pickups, I'm just gonna wire those in to here and here. I've got Seymour Duncan pickups that I'm gonna be using in this thing. Duncan distortions, I believe. So those ought to be really cool. Well, it's a couple days later and I've got some more parts. I picked up a set of really nice pickup rings from Vintage Forge. I got those off of Amazon. The thing I like about Vintage Forge, they tend to copy Gibson parts about as exactly as they can. 
These are really good. They don't quite have the Gibson part numbers or anything like that. And they have some reinforcements in the corners, but they really look externally like the Gibson parts. I got a set of pickups and they are Seymour Duncan full shred. And I ended up having to order some screws and springs for those. So the next step that I've got to do now is to mount the pickups in the rings. Now these are four conductor pickups, but I've got the other two conductors taped back and soldered together. I do that because I don't want them to ground out on anything else. So they're nice and safely tucked underneath this piece of heat shrink tubing. And then in terms of installing the rings, the only thing to pay attention to is the angle of the ring itself. So you want the shorter side facing the front of the guitar or the nut. I'm just going to start with the neck pickup because then I can see the wire feed through the bridge pickup area. And it never hurts to make a little mark on your bridge pickup so that you know which one's which. Now I'm going to tuck these just for the moment and set the pick guard in place because this is one of those pick guards that butts right up next to the rings and I just want to make sure everything fits right. All right, everything's still fitting right, so now I'm going to heat up my soldering iron. So on a Seymour Duncan, the green and the ground go to ground, and the black is the hot wire. I just need to firm up these connections on this thing. All right, that looks good. I do need to do the bridge ground. All right, all my connections are now made, so I can proceed to button this up. One thing that I will check before I button everything down is just that a jack goes freely in and out of there, and that's just because sometimes some of those wires can shift around. All right, well that's buttoned up, so I think I'll test out the electronics next. All right, this is a real quick and dirty test, but I've got a screwdriver. I've plugged everything to the amp, and all I'm doing is I'm testing the bridge first, testing the volume, test the neck, test the tone control, and then test both pickups together. All right, it seems like everything's functioning. Moving on to strings, we're gonna use a set of Arnie Ball Hybrid Slinkies 9 to 46. Okay, obviously the strings are on now. Since I do so many setups on this channel, I don't want to do a full setup on here. Instead, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's required when you do a husk build like this. You know, for the most part, when a husk arrives, it's just the body. You've got to install the tuners, you've got to install the bridge, the tailpiece, the pickups, the electronics, all that stuff. That's all fine and good. You saw me do all that stuff. The other things you're going to have to do are the basics of a guitar setup. So number one, you get the strings on get those cut to length. You're gonna need to rough in the action. Then I usually set neck relief. Uh, the only reason I rough in the action before I set the neck relief is just to make sure that I can tune the strings up to pitch. And if the action's like all the way down, slam down, you're not gonna be able to tune the strings because they're gonna be sitting on the fretboard. You need to check the neck relief. Then you can set the action for real, intonation, and then set the pickup height. Those are all things that I have videos on and I've done many times. You measure neck relief with the strings depressed at the first fret and at the 17th fret, and then you measure in between at the eighth fret. I measure pickup height with the last fret depressed. So you're measuring from the string to the pickup there. Obviously you measure action just like the guitar sits. A lot of those measurements you wanna do with the guitar in playing position. That's just to prevent any distortion from the weight of the guitar sitting on a neck rest. All right, well, this guitar is pretty much set up and ready to go now. I guess what I'll do now is I'll play it a little bit. Again, I don't do any of these guitars justice. I 
I mean, it's just got some nasty growl to it. You know, there really is almost no distinguishing the higher notes when you're in the chords. You can hear them, they just really don't come through over those powerful lows in the mid-range. But I guess my biggest point on this thing is at least with my little tube amp there, it's hard not to keep it from going into distortion. So even when you're in clean, sort of a clean mode, it still kind of has a weird distorted quality to it. You know, it is what it is. These are purpose suited pickups. They really do suit the purpose well. And they scream in the upper registers too. So after playing this thing, you kind of get the idea. It's kind of a, you know, hot pickup, super modern type of guitar now. It has the old vibe to it, like looks wise, but it's definitely got those modern electronics. I appreciate when you guys hang with me through these builds. I like the likes and the comments that you guys give me. I really like those subscriptions, so keep those coming, and I'll see you guys next time.